In today's Neville Goddard conversation, which includes a clip from one of my clients incorporated into the video, where she is speaking at the United Nations, living it, we discuss relating bliss and ecstasy together. See, you are bliss, Satchit Ananda, truth consciousness bliss. And from the spiritual foundation, you can experience bliss mentally and then thus emotionally and physically as an ecstatic, wonderful bridge of incidents to manifesting the bliss you desire. To articulate this in a way that I trust is beneficial for you, certainly, I titled today's conversation Mind Map. I arose from bliss. As we've been discussing, Satchit Ananda, Truth Consciousness Bliss. You are bliss. What could be very helpful as you study Neville's information is to look at the various sources that he studied from and their sources to understand his commentary of the Bible. Hermeticism, alchemy, Kabbalah, the Brahma Sutras, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita. I also recommend the commentaries from Adi Shankara, Ramanuja, Madhva, and also I enjoy Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. To understand that fundamentally there's only God. Only God appearing. Only God appearing to animate all that appears. The individuals are thus emanations of the source. Now the individual may choose to identify with untrue beliefs, which are not from the premise of bliss. So thus when we say I am, any relationship that is not from the premise of truth, bliss, that the individual associates to I am, is untrue. Now, I relate bliss closely, intimately, to being ecstatic, ecstasy. A question was asked, is it possible to imagine several things at the same time? Or should I confine my imagining to one desire? By which he responded, Personally, I like to confine my imaginal act to a single thought. But that does not mean I will stop there. During the course of a day, I may imagine many things. But instead of imagining lots of small things, I would suggest that you imagine something so big it includes all the little things. As he always teaches, go to the end. He said, imagine being ecstatic. So I like to relate ecstasy and bliss together. I am bliss. And I relate ecstatically to appearances from the premise of bliss. He says, you could not be ecstatic and be in pain. You could not be ecstatic and be threatened with a disposition notice. You could not be ecstatic if you were not enjoying a full measure of friendship and love. What would the feeling be like were you ecstatic without knowing what had happened to produce your ecstasy? Reduce the idea of ecstasy to the single sensation. Isn't it wonderful? Do not allow the conscious reasoning mind to ask why, because if it does, 
we could say it could start to look for what the individual interprets as visible causes. There's only one cause. I am. And to know that cause truly, by being still, is experienced as bliss. Be still and know that I am bliss. The conscious reasoning mind won't ask questions as long as the individual is not identified with untrue beliefs. Yet, if the individual is identified with untrue beliefs, the thoughts arise from those beliefs and may ask the question, where is it visibly? How can I experience ecstasy if there are no visible effects to confirm ecstasy? What you may find helpful is what he says next. Rather, repeat over and over again. Isn't it wonderful? While, as he says, suspending judgment as to what is wonderful, Catch the one sensation of the wonder of it all and things will happen to bear witness to the truth of this sensation. Isn't it wonderful? So, as I mentioned, I am aware of what I relate to appearances. After accepting that I am bliss, I know certainly that I am bliss. And any time I relate to appearances, I am aware of what I imagine. And if it is not from the premise of truth, I can in that moment release identification. By being still, knowing certainly, I am bliss. And if it is helpful, I can repeat to myself. You can repeat to yourself over and over again. Isn't it wonderful? Suspending judgment as to what is wonderful. Why well, for many reasons. I am not interested in forming the false identity construct. I am aware of what I imagine. So, what is being referred to here is unconditional bliss. Experiencing unconditional bliss with the experiences of life. As we discussed in Thursday's video, anandamide is released, which binds to the receptors in the endocannabinoid system, and the individual experientially feels ecstatically blissful with appearances. This is why I relate bliss and the ecstatic experiences together. Ecstasy is an expression, a physical experience of bliss. There is no denying that bliss. Anandamide was actually inspired by the Sanskrit word ananda which means bliss. So, I thought it would be key to share this with you as I have enough proof now as a result of applying this over the years 
for myself. I do notice it includes all the things. Wonderful harmonious relationship. Wonderful harmonious lavish steady dependable income consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. Which is the Robert Milliken auto suggestion which Neville shared. Wonderful experiences wherever I am. For wherever I am, there is bliss. And you and I are no different. You are bliss. Abide in, as, and from that feeling. And if you find it to be helpful, apply the auto suggestion. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? And suspend judgment as to what is wonderful. If this condition is met, then bliss. And if the condition is not met, then not bliss. Realize that I am beyond. I am beyond identification by being still. And as mentioned, if you find it helpful, as he said, repeat over and over again. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? Suspending judgment as to what is wonderful. Catch the one sensation of truth. The wonder of it all. And things will happen to bear witness to the truth of this sensation in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as far as the senses perceive. This has been my experience. And also, I would like to share a story from one of my clients who we would have conversations about this. And we would speak exclusively about this. I am bliss. There is no separation between I am and bliss. I am is bliss. So, as a result of applying this, the journey to actualizing the vision appeared as a blissful first-class journey to the destination. As was articulated in Neville's relationship with Abdullah, Neville was going to go third-class. Although he was going to Barbados, he was going to go third-class and Abdullah reminded him that he is in Barbados now, and he got there first class. We could say, Abdullah can only witness bliss. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. They shall see bliss everywhere. So, we would discuss what we're talking about here. And what was experienced a first-class journey to the destination. How so? Well, I would like to share a clip, actually. She ended up on, interestingly, doing a speech for the United Nations about her initiative. Actually, would like to play the clip now. I trust you'll find it to be insightful. And you can witness her blissful appearance as she flows in conversation. And then we'll discuss it. I'll also link to her original video on Instagram in my description. How big a solution is upcycling? At the moment, it's the only way to create a newly fashioned garment with negligible environmental impact that is actually net positive because you're saving it from waste as well. How are we going to scale it up? Well, momentum, right? We need to build this movement. How do you build momentum? Mass times velocity. People upcycling times velocity. At the moment, people are upcycling, but it's incredibly disparate. It's very scattered. Who knows where to go and buy something upcycled right now? Who's making it? You know, all over the place. So if we really want to build it, we have to aggregate it, pull the people together. We need a community hub that aggregates 
and, and allows people to share. And then I also think we need a trading platform to make it commercial. How do you build the number of people doing it? First of all, you need the resources. We have the raw materials. We know there are enough clothes already in existence to dress the entire population for the next 100 years. Tick, how are we gonna build the mass of people that are doing it? We are all human beings who can learn a skill, how to sew. Just imagine if everybody in this room decided to invest two hours a week for the next year. I would be looking at a very differently dressed group of people in a year's time, I believe. We would all be expressing ourselves uniquely. We'd have a little bit of us in what we're wearing. We would feel so different. We feel empowered. We've learned a life skill and our self-esteem would be raised because we're doing something really beautiful and even better, we would become inspirational because the people around you watching you do it will realize how much fun you're having and how great you look and they will start doing it too. This is how we build a movement. So it's up to us. We're looking at the industry. Give me the solution. No, I say we are the solution. Let's be the solution. Really, I feel very passionately about it. <laughs> As you can tell, that's what I feel. So. What have I witnessed? What has she witnessed as a result of being blissful experientially? Inner peace and calmness. Having realized that I am bliss, unconditional bliss, inner peace and calmness in harmonious relationship with the various bridge of incidents, the series of events that appear, that lead up to the actualization of the vision. Freedom from suffering. The individual remains unconditionally blissful in relation to appearances. I don't need to put a condition. You don't need to put a condition on bliss. From the premise of being bliss, it appears as blissful experiences, which include harmonious relationships, clarity and wisdom. You know what to say precisely and it flows. Detachment, because I am not identified with appearances. I am bliss. I and the Father are one. The Father is greater than I. Yet I and the Father are one. The Father is infinite bliss. And I realize and actualize that bliss more so each moment on the journey to actualizing my blissful vision. This reminds me actually of Matthew 6, 8, where it states, For the Father knows what you need before you ask Him. And that's what it says. So knowing that I am bliss, the individual desires bliss, nothing wrong with that. The individual desires to experience bliss as loving, harmonious relationships, wonderful business, wonderful friendships, wonderful you name it, nothing wrong with them. The Father knows what you need before you ask by abiding as the feeling of bliss. And we can witness it in our day-to-day -day initiatives on the journey to actualizing the vision. Inner peace and calmness, freedom from suffering, harmonious relationships, clarity and wisdom, detachment and equanimity, spontaneity and authenticity, harmonious relationship with the present moment, creativity, universal love and compassion. On the entrepreneurial journey, it is experienced as creative expression, which results in having a lavish, steady, dependable income consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. For that's reality. Reality is consistent with integrity and mutual benefit. It can only not appear that way through identification to untrue beliefs from which 
the individual starts to think, overthink in a way that generates illusions after illusion after illusion. Now is where all the power is, no shame and condemnation to release those identifications. To be as I am, bliss. Satchit Ananda, truth, consciousness, bliss. So the practice. Capture the feeling. You may find it helpful to utilize a pointer like, isn't it wonderful? Bliss is your true nature. As stated in the title of the mind map, I realize I arose from bliss. Certainly. No doubt. As mentioned, articulated in the Vedic scriptures, and also the commentary from Adi Shankara, Ramanuja, Madhva, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All of this points to the same truth. Inevitably, we accept truth. Everybody realizes that I am bliss eventually. Now is the opportunity to dwell in bliss and to live from bliss from which it is crystal clear to the individual as I am aware of what I think, what I emotionally relate to the outer appearances of life. And I know certainly, you know certainly, if it's from the premise of truth or not. And if it's not, put off the former conversation. Release that identification. And if you find it helpful to do so, capture the feeling of bliss by being still. So, I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. We could say, I release identification to the false identity construct by being still and knowing that I am bliss. From this premise, I relate ecstatically to appearances from the premise of truth. Isn't it wonderful? Experiencing bliss wherever I appear to be. For wherever I appear to be, there I am. Bliss as I and the Father are one. There is no separation between I and I am being bliss appearing in and as the outer appearances of life in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as far as the senses perceive. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.